Go ahead and turn your Bible to 2 Chronicles chapter number 8. 2 Chronicles chapter number 8. We've got 1 and 2 book in the Old Testament, 1 and 2 Samuel, 1 and 2 Kings, and 1 and 2 Chronicles. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter number 8, let's look at verse number 14. 2 Chronicles chapter number 8, verse 14. The Bible says, 2 Chronicles chapter number 8, verse 14, and he, Solomon, appointed according to the order of David his father the courses of the priests to their service and the Levites to their charges to praise and minister before the priest as the duty of every day required the potters also by their courses at every gate for so had David the man of God commanded now the title of the sermon tonight is called daily duties for every Christian daily duties for every Christian now in this text, we see these Levites, these priests, they are doing their duty of every day required, right? Now, we as Christians also have everyday duties. You know, in the Old Testament, the priest has to uh, rep um, represent the people before God, and they have to do sacrifices, so on and so forth. But we as Christians nowadays should also perform daily duties to serve God. Now, some, some people may say, how dare you use the word duty? But that's what the Bible says, you know, to fear God and keep His commandment, for this is the whole duty of man. Right. But, yeah. of course, we should, we should doing our duty out of love. But, you know, it's not wrong to use the word duty, okay? Now, go to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. So, it's not wrong to use the word duty. It's, not, it's also not wrong to use the word religion, because Christianity is a religion. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. But it is also a relationship. You, you, you can't say Christian, uh, Christianity is not a religion. It's both. You know, it's both right. a religion and a relationship. The Bible says in James chapter 1, look at verse number 26. James 1, 26. The Bible says, If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Yeah. If, you, if you say we don't have a religion, then how do you explain that verse? Mm -hmm. now, we want to seek to obtain the pure religion. At the same time, we should do it out of love, out of a relationship with the Father. So today I want to preach about uh, what are some daily tasks every single Christian should be doing. Go to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. Now, as we're approaching the new year, now most people are wanting to make some new year resolution, okay? Today I want to give you six daily duties for every single Christian. Look at Acts chapter 17, verse number 11. Acts 17, verse 11. The Bible says in Acts chapter 17, verse 11, These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and search the scriptures daily where those things were so. So, basically, number one, we should read our Bible every single day. Now, some people may say the Bible does not say how often we should read our Bible, but I think it's pretty clear, right? Search the scripture daily every single day where those things were so. So, as preachers, we preach the Word of God, and your job, and your job as Christians is to search the scripture you know, it's because sometimes we can make mistakes behind the pulpit. We may take a verse out of context, or we may, we may preach uh, something uh, without knowledge. So it's okay to correct us. If I preach something wrong, you don't agree, talk to me after the service. Because your job is to search the scripture, to study, to show thyself, approved unto God, a workman that needed, needed not to be ashamed, and rightly dividing the word of truth. So the Bible does command to search the scriptures daily. And the other benefit to read our Bible is, the Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And one of the names of Jesus Christ in the book of Revelation is the Word of God. So if you read our Bible, you are able to obtain a clear picture of who Christ is. By the way, in order to have a perfect Jesus, and since Jesus is the Word of God, we ought to have a perfect Bible, which is the King James Bible, right? Because one of the names of Christ is... The Word of God. Go to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. The Bible commands us to search the Scriptures daily, which means to read our Bible every single day. It's one of our daily duties. John chapter 6, look at verse number 47. John chapter 6, verse 47. Here's Jesus Christ speaking. John chapter 6, verse 47. 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Notice verse 48. I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that man may eat thereof and not die. Notice verse 51. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. So the Bible says Jesus Christ, he is the bread of life. And he compared that with, uh, with the children of Israel eating manna in the wilderness. You know, because men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Now let's look at the Old Testament context of they are gathering manna uh, in the book of Exodus. Go to Exodus chapter 16. Exodus chapter 16. The second book of the Bible, Exodus chapter 16. So in order for us to get a clear picture of Christ, we ought to read the Word of God, which is the bread of life, which is Jesus Christ himself, okay? Now the Bible says in Exodus chapter 16, look at verse number 15. Exodus chapter 16, verse 15, the Bible says, And when the children of Israel saw it, talking about manna, they said one to another, It is manna, for they wist not what, what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord had given you to eat. This is the thing which the Lord had commanded. Notice the next phrase, Gather of it, every man according to his eating, and omer for every man, according to the number of your persons, take ye every man for, for them which are in his tents. Jump down to verse number 19. The Bible says, And Moses said, Let no man leave of it till the morning. Now, notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto Moses, but some of them left of it until the morning, and it bred worms and stank, and Moses was, was rocked with them. And they gathered it every morning, every man, according to his eating, and when the sun waxed hot, it melted. Now, according to the story, the manna is a symbol of the Word of God, right? It's a symbol of reading the Bible. Now, some people always say, what's the best time to read the Bible? Now, according to this story, the Bible says they are gathering the manna every single morning. So the best time to read the Bible is every single morning. But of course, you can read the Bible throughout the day, you know, before you go to bed, in the middle of the day. But the best time, according to the principle found in the book of Exodus, is to gather the Word of God every single morning. And not only so, the Bible says, uh, and they gather it every morning, every man, according to his eating. Some more, some less. So, so if you are baby in Christ, maybe you read one chapter a day. If you are a seasoned Christian, maybe uh, read four chapters a day, eight chapters a day. Okay, so you're based on your own eating. You know, it depends on how much you can consume, how much you can eat to gather the Word of God. Because God expects you every single day to gather the manna from the Word of God. Now, now some people may say that uh, we ought to read the Bible, okay? But that's true. Just, just think about this. If someone, if someone go to college and they study to, to be an engineer for years and years and years, and they study for a test for hours every single day, and if you want to be a pastor or you're going to serve God greatly, why don't you spend hours every single day reading the Bible? If someone are getting an earthly degree and they study for hours, they want to get a nursing degree, spend years in college, now why don't you spend an hour in the Word of God every single day if you, if you want to do great works for God? You know, if you want the office of a bishop, is that more important than, the, than a degree to be a doctor? You know, a degree to be a nurse or something like that? So we as a uh, man of God, if we desire the office of a bishop, we ought to spend time in the Word of God you know, every single day. If they can spend hours to prepare for a test, why don't you spend hours to study, to pray, to read the Word of God? Uh, by the way, go to John chapter 7. John chapter 7. And the other benefit to read the Word of God is to know the will of God. Because the best way to know the will of God is by reading the Word of God. Now, some people may say, some people may say, uh, God told me in a dream, you know, God told me in a feeling. But most of the time, it's your mind playing games. So because the, word of God, because the will of God will never contradict, will never go against the Word of God. And the best way, the best way to know the will of God is by reading the Word of God. The Bible says in John chapter 7, look at verse number 17. John chapter 7, verse 17, the Bible says in John 7, verse 17, And if any man will do his will, 
he shall show of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. What this verse is saying is God will reveal the truth to you if you are obedient to the truth he has revealed for, to you. So as you're obedient to God more and more, God will reveal more of the doctrine to you, okay? God will show you the way to live your life. God will show you every single step of your life. So I would encourage you to read your Bible, especially if we are coming uh, to the new year, 2019. Maybe start a Bible reading plan. Try to get the Bible uh, through uh, one year. If you only read four chapters a day, 15 minutes a day, you, are, you will be able to uh, read across the whole Bible in less than a year. And I think every single Christian should try our best to do that at least one time a year, okay? Now go to Psalm 72. Psalm 72. So number one, the Bible commands us to search the Scriptures daily, to read the Word of God daily, to gather the manna from the Word of God. Very good is number two. Look at Psalm 72. Psalm 72. Look at verse number 15. The Bible says in Psalm 72, verse 15. Psalm 72, verse 15. And he shall live, and to him shall be given of the goats of Sheba. Prayer also shall be made for him continually. The second duty we should be doing is praying. The Bible says prayer shall also be made for him continually, okay? The Bible says uh, in Psalm 88, Mine eye mourneth by reason of affliction, Lord, I have called daily upon thee. So God expects us to call upon him every single day. God expects us to pray without ceasing, right? Remember the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread. Because God expects us to pray to, to him every single day to ask for provision, ask for protection, you know, to ask for parenting even. So we should uh, pray to God you know, every single day without ceasing to uh, ask him to provide for the daily bread. Go to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Because we as Christians, we have the best weapon. is the direct access to God through the Son of God. And why don't you utilize that weapon? We have the greatest weapon. It's by prayer, simply by beseeching, by asking, by contending, by, by wanting something. Just simply ask. The Bible says, ask, it shall, it shall be given you, see, uh, seek, and you shall find, knock, it shall be opened unto you. Do you, do you believe that? You know, the, the promise is there. The, the only reason is you don't even ask. The Bible says, in all things, whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. Do you believe that? Why don't you, ask, well, why don't you use your best weapon, okay? Now, God, God will answer a prayer. He will answer a prayer. His answer may be yes, maybe no, maybe three years from now, you know, he may even answer a prayer in heaven. And the problem is you don't even ask. So, so if you don't obtain things in your life, so you, now you know the problem. But the Bible gave us a very nice verse about prayer in 1 John chapter 3, verse number um, 22. 1 John chapter 3, verse 22, the Bible says, in 1 John chapter 3, verse 22, And whatsoever we ask, we, we receive of him. And the condition is because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So say, God gave us a promise, right? He will, go, he will answer our prayer if, because we are obedient. You know, we don't have major sins in our life, and we are doing this to glorify God, to glorify His name. See, the Bible gives us the great promise, and Bible reading and prayer can enable us to be filled with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God throughout the day. Give us this day our daily bread. You know, read the Bible in the morning, asking God in the morning so He can power you through the day to live a holy life. Let's go back to Psalm 72. Psalm 72. So number one, I talked about we should read our Bible every single day. Number two, I talked about we should pray to God every single day. Number three, Psalm 72. Let's look at verse number 15. Psalm 72, verse 15. The Bible says in Psalm 72, verse 15, And he shall live, and to him shall be given of the gold of Sheba. Prayer also shall be made for him continually, and daily shall he be praised. So number three, we should praise God every single day. Daily, let him be praised. Of course, the Bible says, I will praise thee, O Lord, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, we should praise God in everything. That's what I was saying, everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So if you're still alive, praise God. You know, if you're still breathing, 
if you still uh, can walk and get up in the morning, praise God. If you just enjoy a great th- uh, Christmas dinner with friends and family, praise God for that, you know. Now go to Acts 16. Acts 16. So how do you praise God? The Bible says we should speak in yourselves in, in hymns, in psalms, and in, in spiritual songs, right? We should glorify His name. That's why we sing hymns in the church, is to lift His name up. Now that's why I prefer uh, the traditional hymns over the CCM, because it's full of doctrine. It's full of great uh, melody to sing praise to God. We ought to let the Word of Christ dwell uh, in, your, in you richly, in all wisdom and teaching and uh, and. Uh, I forgot the verse, and teaching, and also admonishing one another in, hy- in psalms, in hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. We should praise God. Let Him be lifted up. Let Him be exhausted. Okay. Now, you are in Psalm, you are in Acts 16, but the Bible says in Psalm 150, let everything that had breath praise the Lord. Praise be the Lord. So if you're breathing, praise God. That's what the Bible says, okay? Now, in Acts 16, you have the story when Paul and Silas were thrown to prison for preaching the word. But let's look at verse number 22. Acts 16, verse 22. The Bible says in Acts 16, verse 22, And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stock. So we see Paul and Silas were thrown to prison for preaching the word, for serving God. But what are their response to this event? Look at verse number 25. The Bible says, Acts 16, verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, and what is the next phrase? And they also sang praises unto God. Just think about this. Paul and Silas were being thrown to jail for preaching the word of God. They are being beaten. They are being imprisoned. But, but what did they do? They praised. They sent praise unto God. You know, because it is God who sustained your life. If you are still breathing, if you still have breath, simply by praise God. But notice that. What is the re, um, reaction of their response? They sent praise unto God. But notice the next phrase in verse 25. And the prisoners heard them. See? Your response to trials and tribulations will be a testimony to other people. You see, Paul was thrown to jail for preaching the word of God. They are beaten, but they prayed, and they also praised God, resulting in the prisoners heard them. Look at verse 26. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed, and the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a, na- for a light, and sprang in, and came trembling, and fell down before Paul and Silas, and brought them out, and said, Sir, what must I be to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And we see in the later of the story, the, the prison guard himself and his whole family got saved. That all starts with Paul and Silas, praise God, Amen. when they're in prison. And then God got a great miracles, you know, to, uh, to let them escape, resulting in salvation. Now, here's what I wanted to realize is your testimony, your response to trials and tribulations, to sufferings, will be a great testimony to other people, especially to the unbelievers. They will see you are serving a great God. Even when you are sick, even when you are through some very difficult event, just simply by praising God, people will see you. People will see we are serving an awesome God. Amen? Amen. Now go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. That's why the Bible says pray without ceasing and in everything give thanks. It does not say for everything, but in everything. In every single event, you know, God is in it. Every single event, every single trial, God is in it. You know, he's going to teach you something, but you can be a great testimony for other people simply by praising God you know, for, the, for the situation you are at. In Ephesians chapter 5, look at verse number 20. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. See that? Give thanks always 
for all things. In all things, give thanks, because you're going to give a great testimony to our Lord Jesus Christ. So the Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. So I talk about we should read our Bible every day. I talk about we should pray every day. Number three, we should praise God every day. Number four, look at Hebrews chapter 3, verse number 12. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God, but exalt one another daily. While it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the, through the deceitfulness of sin. So number four, we should exalt one another every single day. Because we are living in a wicked and perverse generation, right? That's how we should shine as lights in this world. You know, just this weekend, I learned a lot about the drug problems in our country. You know, people are dying through depression and suicide. That's why we as Christians should exalt one another to lift each other up. You know, to help each other, okay? Now... One of, my fav- one of my favorite stories in the Bible is when Jesus healed a boy with an unclean spirit. The father of, of the child tells Jesus, Lord, I believe, but help thou with my unbelief. See, it's, it's easy to believe in Christ, you know, just simply accepting the free gift by trusting in Him. But do you trust in Him in every aspect of your life, even through trials and tribulations, even through evil and sufferings? See, I believe in God. I'm saved. But help thou with my unbelief. That's why the, the disciples in the book of Luke are telling uh, Jesus, Lord, increase our faith. Because if you just had the faith of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. So we as Christians, not only we should do our own thing, not only we should read our Bible by praying, by praise, we should also lift each other up. Exalt one another daily, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Go to Acts 14. Acts 14. That's what the Bible says in Hebrews, not forsaking, not, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the man of some is, but exalt one another, right? And so much the more as we see the day approaching. So one of the purpose of the church is to exalt one another, you know, so much the more as we see the day approaching. So we should not assemble less, we should assemble more, right? Three services a, a week, three, uh, three to thrive, that's, that's what they say, right? So you might want to exalt your friends, you know, to come to church Sunday night and Wednesday night, you know, every single service, because we ought to lift each other up. Because if we are going through something, a word of encouragement can mean a word of difference yeah. to us. And we, and we need that. You know, as Christians, you know, we are suffering with Christ all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. But in all things, we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. Amen? Amen. Now, that was in Acts chapter 2, Acts 14, yeah, yeah, Acts 14. I'm sorry. Acts 14, look, look at verse number 22. Acts 14, verse 22, the Bible says, confirming the souls of the, of the disciples and exalting them to continue in the faith, and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. You see, throughout the book of Acts, you, you find Paul, Peter, these uh, Christians, early, early, early Christians, they're confirming and exalting them to continue in the faith. They are teaching them, they are discipling them, and we as Christians should also do the same, to exalt people to please God, to be patient, you know, to serve God, to exalt one another, They're simply encouraging other people. Go to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. So, so I talked about we should read our Bible, we should pray, we should praise, we should also exalt one another. <coughs> number 5, daily duties of every Christian, look at verse number 46 of Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verse 46. The Bible says, Acts chapter 2, verse 46. And they continually, daily, continuing daily with one coin in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Now in the early church, we see uh, during the time of Pentecost, about 3,000 people saved and baptized, and people are being added daily to the church. So I assume they go soul winning every single day. Now the point is, if you go soul winning as you go, you don't have to go soul winning. 
I said again, if you go soul winning as you go, you don't have to go soul winning. Because you are not just doing soul winning, you are a soul winner. Amen. See that? Now, now, I'm all for organized and scheduled soul winning. That's why we gather together Thursday night and Saturday morning. But we should, always, we should also strive daily you know, to preach the gospel. As the apostles uh, have done in the book of Acts, and they're in the temple in every house, they cease not to teach and preach the gospel. And we as Christians should attempt to go so many as we go. Go to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. Now, if the apostles in the past, in the book of Acts, can do great works for God, why can't we do the same thing? We have the same Holy Spirit. See that? If we are praying for revival, and even if we are doing nothing, that's meaningless, okay? People are saying we want to re uh, bring revival to America, but, but, but they don't do any work for God. That's meaningless. The problem is we have the same Holy Spirit as those apostles in the book of Acts. If they can do great works for God, and so can we. All we have to do is to have faith. Right. See that? Now, Luke chapter 2. I have to tie my sermon to some Christmas theme. So Luke chapter 2, here we go. I see how, how that can fit this sermon. Luke chapter 2, verse number 7. Luke chapter 2, verse 7. And now it says, Luke chapter 2, verse 7. And she, Mary, brought forth her firstborn son, which means he has secondborn, okay? These Catholics are believing something wrong. And wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. I want to notice the next phrase. Because there was, was no room for them in the inn. See, the reason Jesus was laid in the manger is because there's no room in the inn. And we as Christians should make room for Jesus, and then every day is Christmas. Amen? So, and, and we can also invite people in to the feast, to compel them to come in, to go so many daily, okay? That ties pretty well. So, look, Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. A little Christmas in this sermon. Last point. So I talked about we should pray, we should read our Bible, we should pray, we should praise, we should exalt one another, and we should... Um, we should go so many, okay? Number six, Luke chapter nine, look at verse number 23. Luke chapter nine, verse 23. The Bible says in Luke chapter nine, verse 23, and he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Number six, we should take up the cross daily. That's why Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, I die daily. Now, that doesn't mean he killed himself every single day, but he denied himself. You know, he is taking up the cross to serve God. He's keeping his body under subjection, okay? So we as Christians should also die daily. Go to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Look at verse number 37. Matthew chapter 10, verse 37. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 10, verse 37, he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. What's the verse saying is if something, something in your life, when you're serving God, get in the way with your, with your parents. If your parents are mad at you, they are persecuting you for serving God, so be it. Because we ought to love God more. And we should always love Christ more than we love our spouse, our, our parents, because Christ should always have the preeminence. See, that's what we mean by taking him on the cross, by suffering, by going through the trials and tribulations. That's, that's why Paul said, you know, to <coughs> present our body a living sacrifice, right? Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You know, doing these things does not make you a, a super Christian. Reading your Bible every day, praying every day, sowing every day, exalting every day, going to church every single week, this doesn't make you a super, super Christian. Why? Because it's nothing but our reasonable service. Amen. Go, to, go to Psalms 68. Psalms 68. I'm almost done. Just a couple of verses. Psalms 68. You see, why? Why should we do all these duties? You know, Bible reading, pray, praise. Exalting, so many, and taking up the cross. You know, why should we do all these things? Why should we do these things every single day? And the answer is in Psalm 68, verse number 19. Look at Psalm 68, verse 19. Blessed be the Lord, 
who daily loaded us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. See, God himself also performs a duty every single day because he daily loads us with benefits. See, the reason we are, we are, we are saved, we should praise God, and we should try to give back to him. Of course, that, that, that does not save us, but that shows our love for Christ because God himself who daily loaded us with benefits every single day. And that's a great, and, and, and that's a great verse for us to, uh, to ponder upon. God himself, who daily loads us with benefits. Two more verses, and we are done. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 2. Deuteronomy chapter 2. While you are turning there, let me read from you Matthew chapter 11. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, I meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. A great verse to sum up all these duties, all, all, all this uh, service we should do unto God to serve God, because His yoke is easy, because He daily loads us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. In Deuteronomy chapter 2, let's look at verse number 7. Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse number 7. This will be the last verse, Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse number 7. For the Lord thy God hath blessed thee in all the works of thy hand. He knoweth thy walking through the great wilderness. These forty years the Lord thy God hath been with thee. Thou hast lacked nothing. Amen. See, when you're looking back to a Christian life, I, I, I've only been saved for about two and a half years, but when I'm looking back to my life, truly, I've been through a lot. When, when, but when I'm looking back, I have lacked nothing because God Himself who daily loads me with benefits. Amen. See, some of you have been saved for a long time 20 years, 40 years. When you look back in your life, even if you've been through a lot, you know, you, you may have gone through some broken uh, relationship, broken homes, broken families, broken uh, childhood. But if you look back, God has lacked nothing because He is the one who sustains you every single day. And as and as um, to present our love, we should perform these daily, daily duties. Amen? That's what the Bible says. I'll let you read it for you one more verse, right? You don't have to turn there. Let us, therefore, uh, con- let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep, keep His commandment, for this is the whole duty of man. Why? Because He is the God who daily loads us with benefits, even the Lord of our salvation. Let's Amen. pray. Dear Lord, thank so much for this time to preach and help us in this coming new year strive to serve you, strive to love you, and strive to tell people about Jesus. And thank you for salvation. Thanks. Thank you for sustaining us every single day. And keep us strong and keep us serving you and fight the good fight of faith. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.